Aloha and good evening, everyone, on this pleasant Friday night from Riverton, Utah. This is the Rewind Sports Network on KSLSports.com and our presentation of Copper Hills Basketball presented by Ken Garf Automotive Dealers. And tonight from Riverton, it is a huge early season indicator of where Region 3 could potentially go as the Copper Hills Grizzlies take on the Riverton Silver Wolves. Alongside my broadcast partner, the former guard from Goshen High School in the great Hoosier state of Indiana, Colton Potter. I'm Alexander Timolip. So, Colton, turn to you. First thing I say is big, big game here for both teams tonight. This could be a very early indicator of where Region 3 could swing. Absolutely, and both teams sit at 2-0 and in the region, and uh, Copper Hills would love nothing more than to steal this victory on the road at Riverton tonight to kind of control their own destiny the rest of the way in the region. And obviously, Riverton wants to do everything in their power to stop that from happening. And this is a very different Riverton team than what we saw the last couple, the last year's matchup. Of course, Colton, we did the second game between these two squads at Copper Hills High School. They look very, very different under night year head coach Skylar Wilson. He's got this team rolling, and it's caught the eye of a lot of people on the network. Yeah, including Coach Watkins of Copper Hills. He mentioned how the the struggle that this team went through last year they went seven and 16 but allowing the young players to play lots of minutes together and grow together has really prepared them and they're blossoming this year and it's led to an 11 and 4 record so far this season so without further ado then let's now jump into the heideman associates keys to the game presented by heideman associates the full service law firm that's committed to winning for their clients colton Take us through what each team needs to do tonight as Riverton's intro video blares over the loudspeakers here. Yeah, hopefully you can hear me, but for Copper Hills, they need to make sure that someone else besides Jackson Karakis beats them. He's one of the best scorers in 6A, averaging 15 points a game. He's top 10 in 6A and made three-pointers. They just need to make things difficult for him all night long. And they have to win in transition. Riverton's going to pressure them, but... Copper Hills is an athletic team that likes to run, get their playmakers in space, and they have to finish at the rim in transition. And now for Riverton, they've got to contain the one-two punch of Logan Whitehour and, and Kaisen Hymas. They're averaging a combined 33 points a game this season and combined for 47 points on Tuesday in their win over Harriman. And so if Riverton wants to get the win tonight, they've got to make things difficult for them, hold them in check. And then on offense, they just have to have a balanced attack. Karakis is not going to be able to do all the scoring tonight. Dunfield, Nixon, Johnson, Nielsen, Edwards, they all have to pitch in and keep up with this high-scoring offense of Copper Hills. High-scoring offense of Copper Hills is right, Colton, because this is a team in the Grizzlies that put up 88, 88 on the Harriman Mustangs on Tuesday, and they themselves allowed only 66 points. Yes, it was a high-scoring game, but... Riverton has a very tall task against pretty much a team that's had their number the last couple of years. Absolutely, and Riverton this year has been a team that's played at their best when they've kept it a lower scoring game in the in the 50s to low 60s. And so they're going to have to control the pace. That, that means pressuring, uh, getting back on transition defense, limiting the easy buckets for Copper Hills, and then blocking out, eliminating second chances and just on the offensive end, moving the ball, getting good shots as much as possible. Let me tell you, Colton, this has been a long time. I think a lot of people have seen an atmosphere like this at RHS. This is going to be a really good matchup between two really young and really untested teams so far. Yeah, and it, it's important for both teams to get out to a quick start tonight. Josh Palmer running, Logan Dunfield with the tip-up, and... Palmer Renning's the one who controls the ball, and we're off and running. And Logan Whitehour immediately goes to the basket and scores. And that's going to be a challenge for Riverton, is dealing with these long athletic bodies all night. That's an example of how, how quick Copper Hills can strike. Uh, just won the tip, one pass ahead, and it's a, an easy layup for Logan Whitehour. Here's Zach Edwards in the post, doubled up. He can't get the shot to fall. Logan Dunfield, the offensive board. Barely nicked the bottom of the rim. Whitehour grabs the rebound, but saves it right to Zach Edwards, who goes up, banks it up, rolls around, won't go. And Hymas finally grabs a piece of the rebound. It'll stay, though, here, as that's deflected out of bounds. It'll stay with the team in white. The officials are really letting them play down there. 
there's three or four times where you kind of almost expected a whistle, uh, a lot of contact, but letting him play early on. Stratton Johnson plays on. First shot goes down for the Riverton Silver Wolves, and we're deadlocked at two early goings. Josh Pomeranning out front, guarded against the much bigger Dunfield. Pomeranning spins, trapped in the paint, back out to Hymas. 14 on the shot clock. Riser, step back for three. Yes! Boy, he has really stepped up in a big role, hasn't he, Colton, the last couple of weeks for this team? Absolutely. He's a really young guard, but one of the best young guards in this, not just the region, but in the state. He's a freshman guard and, and just hit that step back three with confidence, and that that's something that you gotta you got to be ready for if you're Riverton. He, he's very capable of shooting off the dribble. And you see Ashton Howick. He's matched up against Jackson Karakas, number 34. Now swings to Edwards, who gives it to Dunfield, who goes up strong. Foul from behind on the shove. Josh Pomeranning, I believe, is going to get called for the foul. He does. And that will be two shots for Logan Dunfield. Something that Riverton has made a, a big effort for in, in doing the, the first three possessions so far has been getting deep into the paint. Copper Hills cannot let him catch the ball that deep in the paint, uh, whether that is number two, Logan Dunfield, or or number 23, Zach Edwards. you got to push him out, do your work before he gets the ball, and not get buried underneath the rim. They also have a 6'11 center named Christian Henniger who's on the bench. We don't expect to see him that much as Dunfield goes two for two. And Isaiah Riser will take it up the floor here. The cousin of Ace who plays at Alta transfer from Bingham last season. Stratton Johnson draped there on Logan Whitehour. He gets it on the dribble handoff. Riser tries it again. Off the back rim. And we're going to get a foul on the rebound as Karakas and Whitehour went up for it. Karakas won the battle. And Riverton will get the ball. Uh, it's important for both of these teams. Neither of them go too far into their bench. It's important for both of these teams to stay out of foul trouble and keep keep your 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 guys on the court and able to play the whole game. Yeah, that's true. We, we did we did talk about this. Not a lot of these teams are deep in Utah high school basketball. Really, they only rotate about seven eight guys. Yeah, and so when you get in foul trouble, you're you're at that point you're especially if it's one of your main scores on the offensive end. You're asking a lot for for guys who are traditionally role players to step up and and carry the scoring load and and neither of these teams. Really, that, that's something that a lot of their players are comfortable with. Turnover underneath as Dunfield's pass went awry. Shot clock read five. Kyson Hymas will give it to Isaiah Riser on the inbound. Same starting five that we saw in the game against Sky Ridge back on December the 9th, the last time Colton and I covered a Copper Hills game. Wide hour on the drive. Cross court swing. Riser, extra pass. Hymas takes the bump, nice feet inside, finds Whitehour, who goes up strong through the contact. Whitehour is just always under control. He did a good job of absorbing the contact on the catch, but not going up right away, just maintaining control and, and, and going up strong and finishing. Now here comes Hymas the other way off the miss by Colby Nielsen. He puts his shoulder down and he's fouled. Going to the basket. Foul going to be called against Stratton Johnson, his first team first as well. It'll be an inbound underneath, no shot. It's such a luxury to have someone like Kyson Hymas be able to get a rebound as your, as your four and just dribble it up the court right past everybody. And he just is able to drive right past the defender again. He's a very, very skilled big man. Very long and athletic, 6'7". But he can shoot from so many different areas of the court as Stratton Johnson's three goes way off. But it's saved to Kobe Nielsen. And now the shot clock reset. And we're going to have to reset the shot clock again because the shot clearly did not touch the rim, Colton. No. It missed the rim by about a foot and a half. Yeah, Riverton, uh, after the first two possessions, they've, they've kind of looked a little chaotic. Copper Hills has done a nice job pressuring the ball and, and making things difficult for them. Um, Riverton's just got to know, like, this game can get out of hand quick with how qui how quickly Copper Hills can score the basketball if they don't take value each and every possession. Uh, Riverton's 11-4 on the season. They've done a good job of that. 
but their offense is not scoring at the rate that Copper Hill has this season. So they have to value the basketball, move basketball, and get good shots every single possession. Shot clock was reset to 26. Nice pass underneath. It was deflected partially by Ashton Howitt, but it found its way to Dunfield. And Riverton finally gets back in the score column. Josh Pomerani now has it out front. Lobs it in. Whitehour with the mismatch. Goes up. Lost the ball. Tipped up against the glass. And Karakis comes down with it. River Wolves in transition. Here's Karakis to the basket. No. Edwards gets the rebound. Gets it stripped for a second and now gets it back out. There's a new clock. 20 remaining on the shot clock here as Kobe Nielsen, the point guard, will slow it down. And the officials are really letting these guys play. Uh, it's, it's been a really physical game so far. Hymas is away! Count it! And the contact! What a play! And you were just talking about how athletic and just how long Kyson Hymas is. There's a great example of it right there. Yeah, just great anticipation. He kind of baited uh, Riverton into making that pass. Was able to jump it and uh, finish through the contact of Jackson, Jackson uh, Karakis. And he's had a really good start to the half so far. Four points and a couple of assists as well to kind of lead Copper Hill so far early in this game. He steps to the line to complete the three-point play, which he does. Caden Allred and Carter Nixon now check in for the first time here. And this is Allred who's handling it now out front for, for Riverton. And he gets it stolen by guess who? Tyson Hymas who drives it all the way. He's got six early points off a couple of turnovers. Karakis in transition. Lost it out of bounds. It'll stay here. Uh, Tyson Hymas has had a great start to this game. Every time he gets a, the ball in transition, he kind of looks like he's one bad step away from going tumbling down and losing control of the ball. But he's, he, he, he truly does go as fast as he can without going out of control. And he, he's just had a great start to this game. Jackson Karekas has not taken a shot yet, I think, in this game. He has it now out front, but he finds Logan Dunfield underneath. Off the great pick and roll. But I think if you're Copper Hills, Colton, you'll agree with me, that's something you'll live with. Yeah, you don't want to give up uh, wide open layups, but you are you want to get the ball out of Jackson Karekas' hands as much as possible, and they've done a really good job making things difficult for him so far. Josh Pomeranning taking it strong, and Skylar Wilson has already seen enough. This normally reliable Riverton defense who held... West Jordan to just seven points in the first quarter has given up 16 already as they take a timeout officially with 240 left to go. And Colton, we just talked about it. I don't think it's so much the, the defense that's letting Riverton down. It's the fact that Copper Hills is getting whatever they want on either end of the floor. Yeah, they, they're winning the turnover battle early and they're, the length has been a real problem for, for Riverton so far, the length of Copper Hills. They're driving to the basket. They're finishing above and through contact. They're getting steals, deflections. Um, and besides the six points in the paint for, for, for Logan Dunfield, uh, Riverton really just hasn't had any rhythm at all on offense. Something we very rarely said this year about this Riverton Silver Wolves team. Stratton Johnson comes back in, almost juggled that pass out front. And now here's Karakis. Dunfield low. Carter Nixon, left-hand shot, no, but a foul on the shove by Ashton Howick, who puts his hand up in the air and says, my bad. And that will send Carter Nixon to the line to shoot two shots. So going back to one of our keys to the game was making sure that they have consistent scoring from everyone else besides Karakis. He's the only player on their team averaging in double figures this season. They have five players averaging between four and nine points a game. Uh, and so it's so important that, especially when Copper Hills is putting so much effort into taking Karakis away, that other players step up and hit big shots. And, and so far, Dunfield's been really their only guy doing that. 
Nixon goes one for two on that one. Approaching two minutes to go here in the first quarter. Again, the score bug on your screen is unofficial. Riser, pull up from 15. No. Karekas flies in to grab the rebound. Miles Masuisui checked in at that last time out. Now here comes Karekas in transition. Takes it strong. Lays it in at one. There's our man right on the score sheet. And he'll go to the line with a chance to convert the three. And that was just a great individual effort by Jackson, Jackson Karekas. To a little in and out dribbled. And then using his inside hand to shield the defender away and drew the foul as a result and was able to finish through the contact. Just a great move by Jackson Karekas. Kaisen Hymas called for the foul, his first team fourth. Whitehour checks back in. Ben Barris checks in for Riverton, number five on the floor right now. As Karekas completes the three point play. And just like that, four quick points, and we're back to a four point game. Masui Sui, open jumper, left side. You love to see, a, 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 especially a young bench player, just come off the bench, take one dribble and just pull up. And just confidently, as uh, Copper Hills gets another skill, and that's exactly what Masui Sui did last possession for Copper Hills. Here's Riser in transition. Masui Sui fakes, drives, scoops, won't go. Karikas clears the glass. Here he comes in transition. Man trailing behind him is Dunfield. And now we're about to see Christian Henniger, the 6'11 center, come in now for the Riverton Silver Wolves with just over a minute to go here in the first quarter. 17 on the shot clock. Here's Nixon. Pull up three, right side. Back to a three point game. It's a really good response by Riverton. Uh, great timeout to kind of regroup, say, hey, it's an early game. A lot, We still got a lot, long way to go. And, and they've really responded well to the early, early uh, flurry by Copper Hills. Whitehour can't respond with a three of his own. The rebound is taken by Karakis. And this will likely be the last possession of the first quarter as the shot clock is over the game clock. Uh, look for Jackson Karakis to have a, a little bit of isolation here. Maybe a, a ball screen to get a switch and then allow him to go one-on-one. -on -one. Well, you just heard it from Skyler Wilson, Colton. He's standing up on our right side. He just called for the ISO. Dunfield with seven. Back to Nixon. Runs into traffic. Can he get the shot off? He does. Can't get it to go. And that will do it for the first quarter. It was a physical first quarter, yes. But Copper Hills got out to a hot start. Riverton responded in kind. We'll be back with the second quarter play in just a moment on the Rewind Sports Network on kslsports.com with Copper Hills leading 18 to 15. It's time for another round of Name That Sound. All right, contestants, name that sound. Lettuce. Oh, you think that that sound is lettuce? I wish it was. David, our resident champion from Ken Garf. That's the intern Dale, cracking ice for a soda. Correct. And that's why you need a Ken Garf dealership. If they listen this well, imagine how well they'll hear you. We are proud to have UCCU as our sponsor of KSLSports.com's coverage of high school sports all season long. Alexander Timolip and Colton Potter here at Riverton High School for Copper Hills Basketball presented by Ken Garf Automotive Dealers. I'd like to send a shout out to Mike Christensen's sons, Finn and Jude Christensen watching at home tonight. And hopefully you all are watching as well and enjoying this action-packed first few minutes here. Alexander Timlip and Colton Potter here. I'd like to remind you that Copper Hills Basketball's three-pointers every, every make this season is sponsored by the good folks at Ken Garf Automotive Dealers where they hear you. Henniger replaces Dunfield. He'll give him a breath. And here is Dunf and here is Henniger right now. Nice pass. Carter Nixon got it. Boy, he has contributed some spark off the bench. That's eight points, I think, by our count already for Carter Nixon, Colton. Yeah, he's done a good job. That was a great job by Henniger just to be patient and went high-low back 
to even lower on a, on a little high-low action for Riverton. Uh, just a great find, and and now Whitehour just carving out some room down low and able to draw a foul and go back to the free throw line where he makes a killing at the free throw line. He's such a talented player at drawing fouls. I'm going to hold my tongue on that statement for one moment. You are saying, hey. does the announcer's curse, see, is the announcer's curse real or is it not, Colton? Uh, the announcer's curse is not real. It's oh, not, for goodness it's sake. It's not a real thing. Hi, oh, my goodness. You just knew it was going to happen. White Hour hits the second. A rare thing for him to go one for two from the line. And Copper Hills now leads by two. They've led by as many as eight. Karakis now has it off the ball screen. He's had a lot of long bodies placed on him here in the first couple of minutes. Karakis pull up from the free throw line. No, rise with the rebound. And now in transition, here comes Whitehour ahead of the pack. Crossover against Barris. Howick, extra pass. Riser drives, scoop shot off the glass. That was just great ball movement by Copper Hills. Good job by Whitehour to not force it. And uh, a good refusal by, by Riser to make just an incredible athletic finish at the rim. Speaking of athletic finish, there's Jackson Karakis again. And Jackson Karakis is on the score sheet once again. He has five points. Howick tries a long three. That rattles will not go. Wide hour the offensive board. Can't finish. And Barris cleans it up. And here comes Karakis the other way. Karakis for three. And Masui Sui gets the rebound. I really like uh, Kyson Hymas guarding Jackson Karakis just because of his length and his anticipation on the defensive end. That can make things really tough for, for Karakis. Well, as we're singing the praises of Kyson Hymas on the offensive end, he travels with it. Just the third turnover of the game here for the Copper Hills Grizzlies. Karakis and Nixon will take a seat. Stratton Johnson and Allred back in the game. As we approach six minutes to go here in this first half. High post. Edwards back out. Here's Allred behind the screen. Long three. Bingo! And the Silver Wolves have their first lead of the game. Could just be the start of what we would expect here tonight between these two teams. Whitehour can't finish through the contact. Here comes Allred. Lead toss to Johnson. Puts on the brakes. Waits for support. Barris pulls up from the free throw line. Yes! A 16 to 5 run by Riverton. This is their largest lead, their first lead at, at three. Masui Sui drives back to Howick for three on the way. Off the right rim short. Gets his own miss, but throws it cross court, intercepted. Barris drives, count it, and one! What a, a strong drive by Ben Barris. He was able to slow down, go off two feet, draw contact, finish through it. Just a really nice run on the offensive end and defensive end, the last couple of possessions for Riverton. John Watkins, in kind, has also now seen enough. An 18 to 5 burst by the Riverton Silver Wolves. They now lead by five. We'd like to remind you that the Rewind Sports Network on KSLSports.com and our coverage of high school sports is presented all season long by Heidemann and Associates, the full service law firm that's dedicated to winning for their clients. Whether you need patents for your business or need to handle estate planning, Heidemann and Associates is there for you. Call 801 754 4240 today. Or contact them online to schedule your free consultation today at utah.law. Alexander Timolev, Colton Potter here at Riverton High School. I hope you could hear me over that because it's deafening in here. Yeah, this is going to be a, a fun back and forth game. 
Do you expect Copper Hills to just fold because of this run here by Riverton? Uh, that's not what's going to happen. Both of these teams are very skilled and talented and, and are going to respond when, when runs happen in this game. Foul called on Zach Edwards. That will be his first, I believe. They haven't put it up on the scoreboard yet. It is his first. Team foul number four on Riverton. Under five minutes to go here in this first in this first half. Riverton was down by eight. And now it looks like Colton, they switched into a zone here. Yeah, a little one-three-one action. Trapping, trapping the ball, just trying to make things difficult for Copper Hills, and so far it's worked. Shot clock down to 15. Hymas, scoop shot, can't get it to go. Gets his own rebound back up top. Reiser launches again. Yes, sir! Isaiah Reiser with his second triple of the game. I just love the composure that he has for a young freshman guard. They come out in a trapping 1-3-1, one, one, and, and he, he doesn't even flinch. And a tie-up. Possession arrow belongs to Copper Hills. Great hustle on the floor there by Miles Masuisui after it looked like it was all red that dribbled the ball off his foot. Just the fourth turnover here in what's been a really breakneck pace kind of game. Under four to go here in the first half. Off the dribble handoff. Here is Hymas. Drives. Hunts it up. Blocked. Out of bounds. Logan Dunfield says, I don't think so. It was a great play by Dunfield, and Hymas just forcing that. And it wasn't there. He should have just continued to, to work the ball. You have 24 seconds still on the shot clock, so plenty of time. Uh, but I'd like to look for Whitehour in the post. He's, he's, oh, he's not even in the game right now. Excuse me. Uh, next time he comes in, I'd like to look for Whitehour back in the post. Hymas is all the way out of the top right now. Here's Isaiah Reiser, shot clock down to 10. Starts to do his dance, kicks it out. Ashton Howick, shot clock down to five. Now to four, throws it away, out of bounds. Turnover back to Riverton. And again, just really good composure there by Reiser, who looks at Howick and just says, hey, just calm down. It's an early game, we make mistakes, but don't let that mistake compound into a defensive mistake on the other end. And what we know is going to be a very, very close nail, nail biter kind of game. It always is. Dunfield in the low block. Pass deflected out of bounds. Back it goes to Copper Hills. Pass was a little too hot to handle there for Zach Edwards. Uh, Riverton is doing a, a, they're really trying to get the ball into the deep post. But they almost have too many bodies around there. It's drawing a lot of Copper Hills defenders and making the, the interior passes just really difficult to get through. Ashton Howick launches and can hit the three. Tipped out of bounds. Where is it going? It'll stay here. Shot clock reads 21. And they're going to reset the shot clock as the last shot hit the rim. Should be a fresh 35, and it is for the Grizzlies. There's Pomeranning back to Riser. Riser off the screen, gets taken away there by Barris. Great hands. Long toss. Edwards, jump stop. A lot of bodies in there, no call. Still, it's loose on the floor. Johnson kicks it, corner. Three on the way, Allred. Too strong. Masui Sui grabs the rebound. Copper Hills could start to run here if they want to. Pomeranning thought about it, and we'll get it back to Hymas, and they'll reset out front. All right, good job by Pomeranning. Pushing it. There's Didn't have numbers, so he pulled it out. Strong with the ball and didn't turn it over. Uh, yep, he walked with it. Right now on the offensive end for Copper Hills, it seems like every time they do something good to to get good ball movement or set up an opportunity to get a good shot, they respond by doing something out of control, whether that's throwing the ball away or traveling, leading it to turnover. They just need to take a deep breath, calm back down, and, and just move the ball side to side to get good looks. That was a great look right there. What a pass from Stratton Johnson to Zach Edwards. And Riverton is 
up now by four with under two minutes to go here in the first half. And an offensive foul on an illegal screen called on Pomeranning. That's a that's an example of a young guard in, in, in Riser not letting his screen get set before he goes off of it. A lot of times you, you see illegal screens and you assume that it's on the, the screener, but the guards have to to allow the screener to get set and and run their defender right off the screen, and that time Riser just went a little too early. Karekas couldn't get that one to fall, and now we have a reach-in foul against Zach Edwards, and if that's on him, that's going to be number two. The 15 foul on Robertson with 98 seconds left here in the first half. Now both teams have kind of started committing some of these silly fouls 80 feet away from the basket on, on rebounds. No need to reach there, just you didn't get the rebound, just get back and play solid defense rather than picking up a, a silly foul. Halleck, another three for him. Back to a one point differential again. Boy, this Copper Hills offense really shooting it well from beyond the chair, from on the property line thus far. Karek has back out. Johnson to answer. Yes! It's really good ball movement again by Riverton. Moved it side to side. And just a, a really confident shot by Stratton Johnson off of. Away from the basket, just just a really tough shot. And Riser answers right back with a tough shot of his own. Yeah, two for one opportunity right there taken by Copper Hills, you would think. They're probably going to have the last say unless Riverton just decides to run this down as far as they can. And now the Grizzlies are going to get it back with 30.3 seconds to go. As Johnson couldn't handle the pass, and now Whitehour comes back in. Yeah, he has two fouls, so he had to sit for the last four or five minutes, but... Now uh, you would assume that they're going to hold for one shot, and you want your best scorer on the court, uh, just even if he's just there as a decoy. Uh, just the threat of Whitehour does makes Riverton have to to play things differently on the defensive end. Clock started at 30. We're going to start ours now. Riser driven out beyond the three-point line. Now he starts to turn on the Jets. Back it goes. Hymas tries. Blocked by Dunfield, but a foul. And in fact, it was Dunfield with a shove from behind. It's not on. It's not on the block. He shoved them off. And so with 4.9 seconds left, Hymas will get one chance to tie it before the half. I thought that was just a great defensive play. Uh, it's a tough break, but. Uh, still another good solid take, strong take to the rim by Kaisen Hymas, who's had a really good half. 31 to 30. Copper Hills has led for the majority of this half. Riverton only led for probably the last couple of minutes as Hymas ties the game at 31 with 4.9 seconds left. Boston Lamborn just came into the ball game. Defensive subs here for Copper Hills for the last four seconds. Yeah, and if you're Copper Hills, you just want to make sure you make Riverton catch the ball going away from their basket. And ball comes into Johnson. Johnson, Dunfield, and they're not going to get a shot off before the half. That's it. So Copper Hills started hot. Riverton answered back. Colton, and we go into the half as we were, tied at 31. Yeah, it was a great half by both teams. Both fought through shaky periods where their offense kind of disappeared a lot of turnovers really excited for what's going to be a really fun second half what a second half we're set up for here in our first look at region three in 2023 our score at the half is tied at 31 when you come back we'll have words from the first half and what to look forward to in the second half kslsports.com and the rewind sports network proud to bring you coverage of copper hills basketball presented by ken garf automotive dealers Hey there, cleans every inch of chrome car washer. We like your style. Are you turning the line into a parking lot while cleaning that same spot for a third time? You know it. But your impressive attention to detail means you've got the freshest ride on the road. Literally and figuratively. And when it's time for the next new truck to scrub, try Ken Garf. 
for listening skills as thorough as your scrubbing technique. Hey, we hear you. This is the Rewind Sports Network on KSLSports.com and our coverage of Copper Hills basketball presented by Ken Garve Automotive Dealers. I'd like to remind you that the Rewind Sports Network's coverage of high school sports is presented by Western Governors University, where you can make 2022 the year of you when you apply to Western Governors University, which is still offering a one-year MBA for a limited time. Where else can you receive an education that's attainable, affordable, and full of support? It's only here at the nonprofit University of U, WGU. I should say make 2023 the year of you. It's not 2022 anymore. But anyway, Alexander Tumult, Colton Potter here at Riverton High School. Tied at 31. We get set to start the second half. Colton, as we expected, very evenly matched. And a lot of things that were supposed to trend the way of some of both these teams aren't really trending that much at all. Absolutely. And and uh, if you're looking at, at Copper Hills, that they did a really good job in that first quarter of especially getting the ball to their guys. That's something that Coach Watkins talked about was really important, getting their guys going early, and that's Logan Whitehour and Kyson Hymas. They had 11 points at the end of the first quarter, but were held to just three points between the two of them in the second quarter. They need to get them going. They need to handle the pressure and just continue to run and transition. That's where they got a lot of good things in the first half. For Riverton, they have a lot of balance. Their leading scorer has six points. They have they have four, five different players with between four and six points and even though Jackson Karekis hasn't gotten going they find themselves tied they need to continue to get good ball movement spacing and we should be set for a great second half it should be a great second half it already has been it's been a game of runs really Colton if you look at it Copper Hill started a game up 16 to 8 but then Riverton proceeded to come back and outscore Copper Hills 23-15 over the next 10 and a half minutes of the game, including an 18-5 run that put them in front for a brief period of time. But this is now in the second half when things are really going to start to matter, especially in what we talked about is a region that could be determined by what happens here tonight. Yeah, it's a long season ahead, but in a long second half. So both teams got to know if whatever team lands that first blow, that first punch, just take it and respond and i'm sure that's the message both coaches gave to their teams at half here's karekis he gets the matchup on him with kyson hymas now dunfield down to edwards a lot of long bodies reach around there shot clock to 10. dunfield drives goes strong and lays it in it's a really good drive by Dunfield. Their spacing on those high-low passes are so tight. Makes it hard to get in there. Copper Hills has done a good job of pushing them off of the block, moving them off the spot. And Kaiser Hymas is just going to keep driving. That's what he does. He just keeps driving and driving and driving all game. So for the viewers at home that probably don't understand, what, what exactly do we mean here by spacing, Colton? Yeah, you want to it, you want to have your, your ball, your, your offense spread out. What a pass by Riser. That should go in. Oh, that man. does go in. <laughs> I was waiting for it to go in from Ashton Howick. But you can go ahead and continue your thought yeah, there. So right now, you want your offensive players to be spread around the three-point line so that you have room to drive like like Karekis did there. What a play. And then Zach Edwards comes right back and muscles it through the contact. But when you have good space and you're able to drive up, you drive gaps, when you're close together, the defenders are more compact, making it harder to find driving lanes. Whitehour got a little bit of contact, couldn't get that one to fall. Back out it comes, Howick tries it again, hits it again! Well, the guy's not really known for shooting threes, but he is hitting them when he needs to here tonight. Both teams' offenses have looked Looked very, very good to start the second half. Pomeretti called for the foul on the arm. And I believe that is going to be his second or his third. It's his third. And with 6.15 to go here in the third quarter, that's not exactly ideal here for John Watkins. No, and that's an example of Pomeranian was in perfect defensive position. If he had just kept his arms straight up, the whole time that, that was going to be a tough shot to make but he he swung down at the at the ball at the last second and and and, and hit Dunfield and, and just 
has to go take a seat at the bench because of it. Just keep verticality, keep your arms straight up, and you don't draw those fouls. Second shot is good. A one-point differential on the scoreboard. Here's Logan Whitehour. Here's Miles Masuisui who checked in to replace Palmer Renning. Ashton Howick going to try it again. This time it's a little bit off. Kobe Nielsen comes in and scoops it up. And now Riverton could run, and this is what they do best. Zach Edwards to the basket. In a flash, Riverton back in front. That was a great pass by Kobe Nielsen. He got past Riser and was, drew the defender and kind of just dumped it down to Zach Edwards, who went up strong and finished. And we're going to get a holding foul underneath against Dunfield. Or rather, that's against Stratton Johnson. That's a mismatch underneath, I think. You look to take advantage of if you're Copper Hills. The smaller Absolutely. Stratton Johnson on a guy like Logan Whitehour. Absolutely. Whitehour, he, he's tough to guard because he's a, a true three-level scorer. He can shoot the three, he can shoot off the dribble, and he can score down low as he did there. It's really tough to guard him. Seven points now officially for Logan Whitehour. And the Grizzlies leapfrog back in front. Our sixth lead change already here in this third quarter. Nielsen stolen away there. Great hands by Isaiah Riser, but even better hands on the defensive end by Jackson Karekis, who has a look over to John Watkins. And That's that is going back to the Wolves. Uh, Howick tried to force that a little too much, had nowhere to go, and tried to pick up his dribble, and his feet were moving faster and too fast, and he just took too many steps and traveled. When you get a steal like that, there's no need to, to try to press it. As Karek is still struggles to find a shot. Rare miss for him. 5.07 officially left to go here in the third quarter. 39-38 as the Grizzlies lead. Here comes Isaiah Riser, puts on the brakes and lofts it back out to Whitehour. Whitehour kicks it corner, Riser for three. Yahtzee! Riser has played a great game for Cop Copper Hills. He, he's kind of steadied the ship when things started to, to get away from them in the first half. And he's leading all scores with 13 points. That's pretty impressive for a freshman. Jackson Karekis calls bank. 42 to 40, Copper Hills leads by two. Should remind you that Copper Hills is no stranger to close games this season. They have a very good winning percentage when it is close down the stretch. Hymas to Howick for three, too strong. Edwards the rebound, here comes Nielsen. Isaiah Riser currently has 13 points to lead all scores. Pass tipped and stolen away. Hymas two on one. Here comes Isaiah Riser. Back to Kyson Hymas. No go but a foul. And if that's on Zach Edwards, I believe that's going to be number three with under four minutes to go here in the third quarter. They called it on uh, Kobe Nielsen, but that's just another... Great job of Copper Hills getting out in transition. They've done a really good job in transition tonight. That was one of our, our keys to the game was to win in transition. There hasn't been too many times where they've lost control of the ball, not scored, or had a good possession when they've gone in transition. I'd like to remind you, for every three-pointer Copper Hills hits this season, it will be presented by Ken Garf. Automotive dealers, where they truly do hear you. And we talked about with John Watkins before the game how he wanted that hot shooting to continue over. I think he got his answer. He hoped it would, and it is. Yeah, they're not going to score 88 points tonight, but, but they've done a really good job of taking good shots and moving the ball and looking for a good shot. Riser can't hit that three. Dunfield gets the rebound. All red to the corner. Here's Stratton Johnson. Logan Dunfield backs down, turn around, puts up the banker, it goes. Boy, he's had a meal down there in the post tonight. 14 unofficially for Dunfield. And it's back to a two-point game with just over three to go. 
Yeah, Dunfield's leading leading Riverton in scoring tonight. He's, he's had a good half, and he's kind of picked up where Karekas hasn't been able to get going. He's kind of filled that void for him. As Logan Whitehour answers with a corner three, Skylar Wilson has already seen enough. He wants just timeout just to take a breather. It's a Hey there, cleans every inch of chrome car washer. We like your style. Are you turning the line into a parking lot while cleaning that same spot for a third time? You know it. But your impressive attention to detail means you've got the freshest ride on the road. Literally and figuratively. And when it's time for the next new truck to scrub, try Ken Garf for listening skills as thorough as your scrubbing technique. Hey, we hear you. Well, you can barely hear yourself think. Here inside Riverton High School, Alexander Timolip and Colton Potter for KSLSports.com and the Remind Sports Network's coverage of Copper Hills basketball presented by Ken Garf Automotive Dealers. The Grizzlies up by five thanks to a hot shooting night led by Isaiah Riser with a performance I think his brother, his cousin Ace would be proud of. I hope he's watching tonight. Shout out to him. 13 points he has, Colton, and some ridiculously hot shooting. That's carried over from that Harriman game. Absolutely, and, and Logan Whitehour's found his stroke in the second half. He's up to 13 points as well, and eight points already here in the second half. Meanwhile, Jackson Karekas still has seven. Pass is almost stolen away by Whitehour. Shot clock down to 20. Karekas in the low block. And we're going to go blocking foul. Called against Miles Masuisui as John Watkins... Wasn't happy with Ashton Howick not stepping over to help defensively. When, when a, a great scorer like Jackson Karek is struggling to hit jumpers, it's always good to go inside to him like they are right here and, and try to just get him some easy points. Right on cue, Mr. Potter, as you normally are. And it's a three-point game again. Karek is now with nine Logan Dunfield leads all scores right now at 10 as Whitehour lost the ball out of bounds. Was it tipped? Was it tipped? Umpire comes in from the far side. They're going to have a talk here. And the umpire on the baseline is going to say, yes, it was tipped. Two nineteen to go here in the third quarter. Hymas lost that one out of bounds. It'll stay here. Just a lot of hands in the post right now. Yeah. That are not allowing Copper Hills to get into the paint. That was a great find by Riser, but Hymas is just went a little too fast there. If he just takes one power dribble and goes strong off two feet, I think he could have drawn a foul there. And now Riser's matched up against Dunfield. That's a new wrinkle. Whitehour hands off to Hymas. Shot clock down to five. Someone's got to put it up. Masui Sui with four. Drives. Puts up the floor with one. Can't get it to go. Gets his own rebound, though. And puts it back in. As Allred went crashing to the floor. Karakis drives. Tough shot. Got it. And that should have been an and one. That was... That was Pretty clearly a foul on Copper Hills, but just a great drive by Karekis to be able to absorb the contact and keep his eyes on the rim and finish through the contact. There's been a lot of hitting and missing here tonight on both sides as far as the fouls are concerned. Kyson Hymas wing side three. He knocks it down. What a huge shot by Kyson Hymas. Not normally known for his shooting, but he puts in a one when it matters the most. Yeah, and right now, uh, Riverton and... Is kind of trading twos with threes for, with Copper Hills. Uh, they're going to have to guard the three-point line better if they want to get back in this game. And Isaiah Riser a little bit over-aggressive there on Stratton Johnson. That'll be a foul on him. Team foul number three on Copper Hills is first. Boston Lamborn in opposite. Zach Edwards now for Riverton. This is Copper Hills' close to their largest lead. Their largest lead of the game was eight. And that was very early in proceedings here tonight. Riverton's largest lead by comparison was just three. High post Dunfield. 
Kicks it back out. Allred drives. Left hand Stroop off a of glass. Beautiful move by Ben Allred. Back to a four point differential again. And this will be the last possession of the third quarter as the shot clock has been shot dead. That was a really good job by Zach Edwards to shield off his defender to allow Allred to get to the rim. Oh, no bad good. shot, bad you know, shot. Yeah, there were two guys in the same area, and John Watkins was not happy with that. Here's Karakis driving strong, no foul. And on cue, Watkins gets White Hour right off the bench. He was not pleased with that shot choice. Yeah, now Riverton gets essentially two po an opportunity to get two points that they wouldn't have got if they had just held for the last shot, and they get ball to start the fourth quarter. So essentially they're stealing a possession. Um, just just a really ill-advised shot for, for Ashton Howick. Karakis perfect on the first. He has 12 now, seven in this third quarter. Logan Whitehour has 13. Ace Riser also has... Ace Riser, Isaiah Riser, excuse me, has 13. I keep thinking of Ace Riser over at Bingham as that shot no good. Dunfield gets the rebound, goes back up, and he is fouled. And it's going to be more free throws with 4.7 seconds to go. Another case of just being more aggressive on the offensive glass. And now things could really get hairy for Copper Hills as John Watkins has got to be seething down here on our near sideline. Dunfield steps up and rattles off the rim, no good. So four seconds here for Copper Hills, that's plenty of time. The rule is about one dribble per second. Um, so they have a, enough time to get the ball past half court, uh, depending on what happens here on the, on the free throw, and get a, a decent look off uh, before the end of the quarter. Dunfield's second shot is no good as well. Here comes Logan Whitehour. He's going to put up the half quarter. Just off the mark. And that will do it for the third quarter. And that will take us into the final period of play. Well, we told you Copper Hills was no strangers to close games. We're going to have another one here tonight. 52-49. The Grizzlies and Silver Wolves going to go down to the wire tonight in Riverton. It's time for another round of Name That Sound! All right, contestants, name that sound. Lettuce. Oh, you think that that sound is lettuce? I wish it was! David, our resident champion from Ken Garf. That's the intern Dale, cracking ice for a soda. Correct. And that's why you need a Ken Garf dealership. If they listen this well, imagine how well they'll hear you. Well, here we go. Alexander Timolev, Colton Potter here at Riverton High School for the start of the fourth quarter. Colton, I don't know if he can even hear me at this point. It's absolutely deafening in here, but it's that kind of energy that's been here all night. Really can't be surprised at how this game has gone. Absolutely. You love to see the, the feel the energy here uh, in the arena during a, a, especially a, a region game, a rivalry like this. Uh, it's been a really fun night. It should be a really fun last eight minutes to close out this game. It'll be the longest eight minutes that we've probably had all season long, Colton and I. Josh Pomeranning back on the floor with those three fouls. Now we're going to get a reach-in foul called against Ben Barris. Being a little too over-aggressive there on Logan Whitehour. Yeah, I really like what Copper Hills is doing with Whitehour, getting him in the post uh, because... He, he's really a guard. He's not He's not a traditional big in high school basketball, but he, he has p good post skills and is able to go up and finish through contact. I like to see them continue to go to him in the post. Here's Isaiah Riser, who has 13 points. Logan Whitehour also has 13. He drives, can't shoot. Palmer Redding, 20 on the shot clock, gets it taken away by Paris. And he smartly will hold on to it and bring it across the timeline. In a close game like this, every single possession matters, and and not not getting shots off, having turnovers, are just killers this late in games. Edwards, 
through the contact, and we are back in a one-point game. The Riverton Bigs have just feasted down low in the paint, and it's paying off for the purple and gold, for the purple and silver. Riser drives, floater, off the lane, can't get it to go, tip up, Hubbard inning. Riser gets his own rebound, back up, can't get it to go, but he gets fouled. Took a hit right to the chops. Riverton's student section doesn't like it, but he'll go back to the free throw line. What a game Isaiah Riser has had. I mean, this freshman shows absolutely no fear, Colton. None at all, and in a game where you have three of the best scores not just in the the region but in all of 6a and he's leading all scores now with 14 points as a freshman it's just really really impressive jackson caracas comes back in stratton johnson will take a seat foul was on zach edwards his 13 fifth as riser rattles out the second Whitehour, though, couldn't control the offensive board. And back it goes to Riverton. Karekis really found his, his groove offensively there in the third quarter with seven points. He's up to 12 for the game. I'd like to see him continue to go to him inside. Uh, that's kind of where he's made his killing so far. And meanwhile, we got an offensive foul as Zach Edwards was not quick enough to set the screen. And that's his fourth and foul. And that's his fourth. Yeah. And that next foul will put Copper Hills with free throws the rest of the way, and Dunfield immediately checks right back in. And again, that's another example of something what Riser did earlier, Allred did there. Uh, he just wasn't quite patient enough to let the screen get set. And so he's still moving, and and so Edwards picks up the foul, but really that that's kind of a turnover on, on Allred. Whitehour looking for space, back to Hymas. Hymas drives right through traffic, finds Logan Whitehour who misses the bunny, tip back up and won't go, and Karekis clears. Even though they didn't score there, that was a great offensive possession for Copper Hills, just a really good pass by Hymas. Karekis, no, foul. Josh Pomeranin called for the foul and that's his fourth. And yeah. the next foul on Copper Hills will now put the Wolves in the one plus one bonus. And Pomeranian was pretty uh, visually frustrated there. He felt like Karekis went into him, but when you leave your feet as a defender, you're putting yourself at the will of the officials to call a foul. And so he needs to stay on, on two feet, keep arm, both arms straight up in the air, and just live with the result of the shot. And more times than not, they're not going to call a foul. But when you leave the ground on the shot fake, oftentimes it leads to that foul call. And the game is tied with 6.05 left to go. As we just talked about the depth of both of these teams, John Watkins not even moving anybody to the scores table to relieve Josh Pomerani. He's going to leave him in there. Big risk being taken there by the fourth-year man. Here he is now on the perimeter. Back to Hymas. Shot clock down to 13. Wide hour. Tough turnaround. Baseline shot. Off the front rim. Karekis the rebound. Wolves with a chance to retake the lead. Karekis spins, scoops and scores! Just a great little spin back dribble there by Karekis to get to, get to his left hand and finish. And he knows Pomeranian does not want a foul. And so he can be a little more aggressive because, because of his four fouls. Riser can't hit. Bodies on the deck. Wolves come out of there with it. Karakis, three on the way. No, Hymas the rebound. I Boy, think, the roof would have come yeah. off this place had that got in. Hymas now drives into the paint, finger roll, no. Pomeranian, no, Hymas cleans it right back up. And guess what, folks, we're tied again. Riverton's got to do a better job on the, the defensive glass. Uh, Copper Hills has probably had six or seven offensive rebounds in this quarter alone. But they just haven't been able to finish. They've got to finish when they're at the rim. Hymas was able to there to tie this game. 
Oh, Allred almost did it there. <laughs> As Hymas gives him a pat on the back. It will be two shots. Stratton Johnson will come back in now. And the Riverton Silver Wolves will be shooting free throws for the rest of this game. What a four minutes and 29 seconds we are set up for here at Riverton High School. Allred's first shot is way off. That could be some of the nerves that's settling in here, Colton. You know that feeling very well from your time playing high school ball. Yeah, and, and in a close game like this, every possession, every point matters so much. Uh, good job just relaxing, taking a deep breath there. It wasn't able to get it go in, but free throws are going to be crucial down the stretch here for both teams. Yes, both teams are going to be shooting free throws the rest of the way here, no matter what, at this point. Tie game at 55. Wide hour in the post, double team, turn around, got it, and the contact! An almost impossible shot by Logan Whitehour. I was just about to say, I don't, I'm, I don't want to, I, I want to see Whitehour stop fading away from the basket, and as I'm about to say that, I, he's able to draw the foul and, and finish a ridiculous shot. Uh, just He's such a talented scorer. Uh, just a great shot by Logan Whitehour. Oh, he misses the free throw, and it'll go out of bounds. Back it comes to Riverton. Zach Edwards checks back in with the four fouls. Remember, Palmer Renning has four, Edwards has four, and we're going to get a timeout. Signaled for and granted a 30-second timeout. We will keep it right here. No need for us to go anywhere. Rewind Sports Network on kslsports.com. And our presentation of Copper Hills Basketball is presented by Heidemann and Associates, the full-service law firm that's committed to winning for their clients. Call them at 801-754-4240 or contact them online at utah.law to schedule your free consultation with them today, courtesy of the Rewind Sports Network. Oh, Alexander Tumula, Colton Potter here at Riverton High School. Colton and I have just taken one big deep breath because I know Mike Christensen and, you know, Mike and, Mike and all three, both of us have worked how many games now? This is the first real close game we've had. What a four minutes we're set up for here, Colton. Yeah, it's, it's going to come down to which team values the basketball more who's able to knock down free throws when at the charity stripe and and finish possessions, whether that's getting the defensive rebound or or finishing at the rim, finishing jump shots. It's so important to when you work so hard to get a stop or to get a bucket that you finish the possession and make shots. Oh, how about that finish? Ben Allred right through the contact. Tied again at 57. Which team is going to land the last haymaker here tonight? Hymas, turnaround shot, no, tipped up, can't get his rebound, on the floor, scramble for it. Back it comes, Howick for three. And Allred gets the rebound, four against four the other way. Karakis to the basket, no. He needed to take one more dribble, get on balance. He was a little off balance and not able to get the angle right. But, man, this is a really fast-paced game right now. It's a little sloppy. It's good for both teams to maybe just slow it down and just take a deep breath. Hymas misses the three. It'll stay here, though. Off the hand of Logan Dunfield last. We should bring you up to date on a game reset. Both teams are in the bonus. There's no more fouls to give. And both teams also have all three timeouts remaining with 2.48 left to go here in regulation. And the long inbound is nearly picked. Ooh. And then Pomeranning picked up his pivot foot. Yeah, that was a good call by the official. Just just a little bit. He thought he thought Riser was going to be open on a back cut. Um, and Ry Riser just wasn't looking, and he just drug that, that pivot foot just a little bit, traveled. Um, and he goes to the bench, probably a, 
a smart move just for a minute. Don't want him to, to foul out with a couple minutes left, but I expect that to be a pretty pretty short break for, for him. 2.44 left in regulation. Karekis to the basket. Tipped out of bounds. Cabrera's ball. And uh, Karekis needs to be careful. He's he's uh, saying a little too much probably to the officials. Just he thought he got fouled. And whether or not he did or not, that doesn't matter. Move on. Play defense and, and go get it the next time down the court. Riser. On the baseline, lost it! Great hands there by Stratton Johnson. And then Hymas comes back with a steal on the other end. Hymas drives, no foul. Kyson Hymas had Jackson Karakas number last year in the second of their two matchups. Guess who made the play on that one? That was a, just a great individual effort by Kyson Hymas. Quick hands, get the steal, and the, the balance to stay to stay in bounds and draw the foul. Uh, just really, really good play by Hymas, who's had himself uh, quite the game tonight. Hymas gives Copper Hills the lead with a minute 52 left to go officially here in the game. Remember, all, all three timeouts belong to both teams. Both teams are in the penalties. As Hymas hits both, and a timeout or a substitution defense for offense is called for. John Watkins brings Pomeranning right back in. And Hymas is up to 18 points. He's had a really, really good game tonight. And a lot of his points have come in transition off of steals. I, I would assume he has three or four steals. He's just made a huge impact on both ends of the court for Copper, for Copper Hills. Dunfield underneath, count it on the contact! Josh Pomeranning fouls out, and Dunfield with a chance to give the Silver Wolves the lead back. Uh, Dunfield has been Riverton's most consistent player tonight. Um, he's now up to, let's see... 13 points uh, to lead, uh, who's second on, on their team in scoring tonight behind Karekis. But he's just been consistent. He's contributed in all quarters. He's played great defense. And he just gave his team the lead with 1.30 to go. And Skyler Wilson's going to call a 30-second timeout to set up the defense with 1.38 to go in regulation time. As we do, we want to have a moment to tell you that KSL Sports and the Remind Sports Network's coverage of high school sports is presented by Western Governors University, where you can make 2023 the year of you by going to wgu.edu to sign up for your chance to receive a scholarship at Western Governors University. Get your degree on your own time at your own pace. Go to wgu.edu for more. One thirty-eight left in regulation time. Copper Hills down by one. Can they have yet another cardiac Copper Hills finish? Whiteauer on the baseline. Riser for three. Too strong. Rebound. Comes down to Ben Allred. Riser hesitated. Just oh, what a steal! Two on one the other way. Wide hour to the basket. Rolls off the rim. Riser, count it, and the contact. Isaiah what? Riser, are you serious? What a play by the freshman. Coming up huge in uh, just a massive game. What a great game for the freshman. 16 points. None bigger than those two right there. And a chance uh, to uh, extend the lead here at the free throw line. He can't. Dunfield the rebound. A minute left to go 
in regulation. Riverton trails by one. Edwards cut off. All red. Back out. Johnson. Shot clock at 13. Edwards. No. And we're going to get a foul on the rebound. I believe he's calling it on the shot on Logan Whitehour. And it's going to be free. Th and it's going to be free throws. It's going to be free throws. And they signaled two shots, so it's not one and one. That it was on the shot. Um, so even if he misses this one, he still gets a second chance to tie the game. Edwards ties the game calmly. 61-61. You got a box out here if you're Copper Hills. Absolutely, 44.6, 44.4 left to go. Edwards gives Robertson the lead back. Thirty seconds on the shot clock. There's a nine-second difference. foul on Zach Edwards and he now has fouled out of the game and that will put Kyson Hymas on the line for two shots as this entire gym is standing here at Riverton that was just a really good veteran play by Logan Whitehour he knew Zach Edwards was fighting so hard to get over top of him to not allow the ball into the post and maybe a little bit of a sell but just it definitely was still a foul. Just a really good job by Whitehour to, to draw the contact. Now is a chance to not only tie the game, but to give his team the lead with 24 seconds left. Skyler Wilson taking his time, waking the substitution, presumably to ice Logan Whitehour, who's been reliable at the free throw line. But these are two huge free throws. And Skyler Wilson is indeed going to take a timeout, a full one, to try and ice Logan Whitehour. And we will step aside as well to let you all catch your breath. Back with the free throws after this. It all starts with a smile. To show you care, offer a sign of love, welcome someone home. Even when we don't see each other, or share a room, even without words. Smiles bring us together. Let's keep yours healthy. Stonehaven Dental. Schedule online at StonehavenDental.com. A wise broadcaster named Stuart Gardner, who commentates for Manchester United Football Club, said, these are special nights. Riverton leads by one. Kyson High or Logan White Hour will be at the line. Colton Potter alongside me, Alexander Timolet. Make or miss, Colton. What happens here? So uh, make or miss. Uh, if, if you're Copper Hills, if, if he makes both free throws, the last thing you want to do is foul. If you're Riverton, if he makes both of these free throws, you're, you want you want to go quick. You want to try to score. So that way, if you do miss, you still have an option to foul and get another possession. If he makes just one, then you hold for the last shot. If he misses both cup for Copper Hills, you're fouling immediately. Are you going for a steal and then fouling? Whitehour calmly sinks that one. 16 points for Logan Whitehour. We are deadlocked at 62. Twenty four point six seconds to go. This is it. Karekis drives Johnson for three. Off the mark. Hymas the rebound and he is fouled with eleven point six seconds to go. Uh, Stratton Johnson had a, a great shot. I love what I just saw from Jackson Karekis. 
Uh, Stratton Johnson put his head in his shirt, disappointed with himself for missing that shot. And he ran over to him and said, hey, look at the time. 11 seconds left. You might have to, to hit another, have another opportunity here. Let's block out, get the rebound, and go t- send this game into overtime. Or potentially still win it. Yeah, Kyson Hymas has 18 points. Chance to, to make it a, a three-point game. But regardless, it'll be a one-possession game. Hymas calmly sinks that one, 64-62. John Watkins wondering if he wants to take a timeout here. He's signaling everybody don't foul. Hymas leaves the second shot short. And one chance for Everton. Karakis, step back, puts it up. No! Don't feel the tip. No good. And... We're going to get a foul! They They got a foul foul with no time left! Wow! Hold on a minute, we're going to have a conference! Hold on a minute, we're going to have a conference! Hold on a minute! the, the umpire and there's going to be a foul. Two shots. If we can uh, take it that is. to replay, can't do that in high school. It is going to be two shots. Oh, and they called it on Logan Whitehour. That's his fifth. So and he just happened, fouled out. So if this goes to overtime, what a huge loss for Copper Hills. Point two seconds remain on the clock now in regulation time. Dunfield must hit both to extend the game. Wow. And a timeout granted to John Watkins to try and ice him. So important note here is with 0.2 seconds left, it has to be a tip-in if he misses it. But that is still enough time if you were to miss it that a tip-in could give Riverton a win. Uh, obviously, if you're Riverton, if you're Logan Dunfield, you just want to go up and knock this free throw down and send it to overtime. But I guarantee it, Coach Watkins is letting his team know, hey, no matter what, we don't have to get the rebound. Just don't let them get it. Just block out like your life depends on it. And, and don't let them get a tip-off if he does miss the free throw. Nobody has led by more than six points here. And Logan Dunfield now to step to the line. And big number 50, uh, Christian Henninger, is in the game. Presumably, if the free throw is missed, to be able to tip the ball in uh, for Riverton. Here it is. Cue the noise. And now we're going to get a brief stoppage as we're just making sure everybody's on the floor. And now here we go. Cue the noise. At UCCU, we'll provide you with a low-rate line of credit that makes it easy to access the equity in your home with no fees or closing costs. Simply complete an application on your phone or computer and select the low-rate option you prefer. And then sit back and enjoy the peace of mind that comes from knowing you have a low-rate line of credit. Ready for whatever life throws at you. To learn more or start your application, visit uccu.com or stop by any branch. Drama of the highest order. 
Welcome back to Riverton High School. Alexander Timolip, Colton Potter put four more on the clock. The fifth quarter in effect at Riverton High School. If you're Copper Hills here, it's important to come out and just play exactly how you were at the end of that game. Riverton kind of has the, the, the momentum now. Thought the game was over, right? They're in the a fouls called and hit two clutch free throws with timeouts. And, and so your, your leading scorers fouled out. It's important that they come out and respond and, and play with the same confidence that they played during that last, really the entire game. Dunfield and Hymas, as we were, off we go into the unknown. That is overtime. And right off the bat, Nixon getting a little greedy, misses the three. And now here comes Isaiah Riser, who seemingly now has the weight of the world on his shoulders. Drives, kicks it back out. Hymas off the glass, no good. Karekis the rebound. Four minutes is a long time, and both these teams kind of feel like they're, there's 30 seconds left, which is exactly how they were just playing. Four minutes is a long time. They need to slow the ball down, to get a good shot on the offensive end. Logan Whitehour has fouled out. On the other side, Zach Edwards has fouled out. Isaiah Riser to the basket, scoops wow. it up and in! Isaiah Riser breaks the ice in overtime. That was just an incredible finish. Great athleticism to hang in the air just a little bit longer to avoid the shot block and finish over the top. On the other end, Carter Nixon, count it! And the contact! It is gonna be tooth and nail all the way to the finish! Foul call on Masui Sui, his second with 2.55 left in overtime. That was a great slip by him uh, and, and just a great pass. And then a great, just great concentration and strength to finish through the contact. Nixon, though, can't give the Silver Wolves a lead, but Dunfield goes up. And Halleck clears it. And then it's thrown out of bounds, and that is probably some of the fatigue factor that's filtering in. For both sides, this has been quite some game. It's important for both of these teams to respond. They're going to make mistakes, and every mistake is magnified here in overtime. But you gotta, you got to put that play behind you and move on. All red throws it into the backcourt. And it is saved, but not enough to prevent the backcourt violation as... Whitehour comes over to see if Johnson's okay. He is. What an effort by Stratton Johnson. Uh, a full-out dive to try to save that. Uh, didn't get the call, but just great effort. Both of these teams are leaving everything out of the line here tonight. I miss. Howick drives off the glass. Tipped, rebound to Dunfield. 2.22 and counting here in the extra session. Thank goodness for a shot clock in Utah high school basketball. Allred kicks it out. Nixon can't take the shot. Shot clock to 17. Johnson thinks about it. Shot clock at 10. Allred drives off move. the glass. What a great in and out dribble by Allred to get to his left hand and get past Riser. See how Copper Hills responds. Kai said, Hi, Miss! Of course! <laughs> 90 seconds left in overtime. Kaisen Hymas has had quite a game for Copper Hills. 22 points to lead all scorers. And he's been kind of their guy when, when they've needed a bucket. Uh, him and Whitehour, they've, and even Riser at times, they just keep responding. Isaiah Riser will bring it up off the air ball by Dunfield. Remember, reset the timeouts. Copper Hills is three, Rogerton two. 
Approaching one minute to go in overtime. Hymas, Boston Lambor, the floater, no! Here comes Karakis, under a minute to go. Karakis for three, no! Howick the rebound. I like that shot from Karakis, the defender was backed off. And even though it was an early shot, it, it ensures that no matter what, they're getting the ball back. Uh, so if Copper Hills can't just hold it for the last shot. Hymas drives. No! And this will be the last shot of overtime, and it will belong to the Silver Wolves. We'll let like the pitchers talk. For the last 15 of overtime. It looks like he's going to let him play. No timeout. Allred drives. Allred, top shot. No. Don't feel the put back. Got it. Robertson wins. A brief conversation now taking place to determine if the shot counted and if there was a timeout called as the ball cleared the net. It'll be interesting to see what happens here because they could technically call a technical on the Riverton fans. You would hate to see something like that, but they're giving the timeout to Copper Hills. I'm yes. not sure how much time will be added. You would assume probably about a half a second. There you go, half a second left, just over half a second, point six. It's enough time to catch and shoot, no dribbles. Yes, and the other thing is too, Colton, Copper Hills does have the, does have the option to advance the ball to half court, but they're not gonna take it in this, and they, I would think they are gonna take it here in this situation. No, I, I believe in it, and in high school in Utah, you cannot advance the ball. No, yeah, that's right. You can't. But regardless, you want to get something where the you get, I would assume, either Riser or Hymas or even Howick towards the basket. Um, they might try some, some long Hail Mary to, to Hymas and ha hope he can jump over the top. But, man, what a play by Logan Dunfield twice now in regulation at the end of regulation at the end of overtime getting an offensive rebound remaining calm and going up strong uh he's up at up to 17 points just a great game for logan dunfield one last try on a wild night in riverton and now Skylar Wilson gonna call one more time out. I don't think he had the right personnel out there on the floor. I think he also wanted to have Copper Hills show their hand a little bit. Yeah, uh, he exactly. He wants to come out and see how they line up and then he can respond defensively based off of that. So we'll see if, if Coach Watkins draws something else up. Uh, you don't really have too long of a, a play sheet for down two full court, .6 seconds left. Um, we'll see what they come up with though. What a game it has been tonight here in Riverton. 70-68, Riverton leads. Point six seconds away, the Silver Wolves are from their 12th victory of the season and potentially a season-defining win for Skylar Wilson. Point six left in overtime. Now, if you're Riverton, the last thing you want to do is foul. Read my mind exactly, Colton. 
Here it is. Masui Sui runs the baseline. It is going to hit the curtain. And that is a dead ball by rule. Possession arrow belongs. Is it a jump ball or is it just a turnover? It's a jump ball. Well, possession arrow now belongs. Well, the, the possession arrow is for Copper Hill, so it looks like it's just Riverton. And now we're going to have a foul. Point three seconds, I believe, are going to still be left. They're saying there's time left. My, my goodness. There'll be point three, I believe, added back on. If not, well, if it's, it has, yeah, point two. That means that no, no matter what happens, point two. Yeah, uh, there's point two. There's you can't catch and shoot at that point by rule. So uh, it's got to be a tip in, and a full court tip in would be quite the ask. <laughs> That'd be something we haven't seen, frankly. <laughs> Jerika stands up, misses the free throw, but. I really don't think it's going to matter at this point. No, a uh, little chaos to a little chaos here to end what, what's been a great game and uh, just what I expect will be a lot of Region Three games this season. It makes me can't wait for the rematch later in February between these two teams back at Copper Hills. Point two left on the clock. Karikis adds it. And John Watkins just going to prolong the inevitable here, use his last time out because they're not going to carry over, so he might as well. Yeah, and try to drop a play and see what happens. Um, yeah, stranger things have happened. But by rule, you cannot catch and shoot this, so it's got to be some sort of a tip or volley or... Uh, 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 and I'm, he's, he's showing that to his guys. You can't catch it, uh, but on, on the pass, just try to, try to tip it towards the basket, push it, and hope, hope for the best. And so uh, this will be an interesting play. Uh, here, we'll this see, what, quite see a what he draws up. Yeah, it would be quite a play. Officially .2 seconds left on the clock in overtime. Henniger defending the inbounds. Mosui Sui will throw it in. Mosui Sui, the long toss, intercepted, and you can hear the roar from clear across the valley. The Riverton Silverwolves win it in overtime. 71-68. In a game that had a little bit of everything. It was a little bit of purple magic that sealed the deal for the Riverton Silverwolves. What a game. We'll be back with one final wrap-up on kslsports.com. They said I have to take tests when they tell me to. They said my degree would cost a fortune. But I didn't have to listen to them. Because I have a university that listens to me. Tests on your time. Courses on your time. Graduate on your time. WGU, the University of You. What an unbelievable game. A signature win for Riverton head coach Skyler Wilson and his Silver Wolves. They defeat the Copper Hills Grizzlies in overtime, 71 to 68. Alexander Timolip, Colton Potter here at Riverton High School. Colton, what a game. Uh, great game by both two really good teams in the region. Uh, both teams faced a lot of adversity tonight. You saw a lot of things from their team that uh, maybe they hadn't seen so far. Both teams responded well. You, do, you know, you'd like to see what that overtime period's like if, if Copper Hills has Logan Whitehour, right? 
their leading scorer, but just a great effort by both teams and just a really good effort by Logan Dunfield to crash the glass, both at the end of regulation and overtime, to get putbacks to send it uh, to overtime and to win the game. And with that, we're going to go ahead and name our Heidemann and Associates player of the game presented by the Full Service Law Firm. That's committed to winning for their clients, Heidemann and Associates. Colton, you just name dropped him. Logan Dunfield, the game winner, effectively the game winner, not counting the crazy sequence that ensued, is our player of the game. Absolutely. Like I said earlier in the fourth quarter, I think he was their most consistent player from start to finish. Uh, he led the team in scoring with 17 points, which is twice what he averages on the season. And early in the game when Copper Hills came out and was up 16-8, to eight, he had six of their eight points to keep them afloat until Jackson Karekis could find a shot. And just a great individual effort late in the game to, to, to give his team a victory tonight. Colton, these are special nights. Special nights indeed. I'm glad I got to share it with you, man. What a fantastic game. Excited for the rest of the season. Uh, it's going to be tough to live up to this game, though, that's for sure. It certainly will be, but we'll be along for the ride on most of it. Want to thank Mike Christensen, send a special shout out to Finn and Jude Christensen watching back home tonight. It's a celebration, purple celebration in Riverton tonight. Riverton defeats Copper Hill 71 68 in overtime. For Colton Potter, I'm Alexander Timolip. Until we meet again, this has been a presentation of the Rewind Sports Network on kslsports.com. Copper Hills basketball is presented by Ken Garf Automotive Dealers. Take care of one another, everyone. Aloha from Utah. Sleep well and good night.